Uh, hello, uh, together my name is uh, Michel Kunz. I'm a member of uh, the management board of uh, SVB uh, Infrastructure. I would like uh, to share I would like to share uh, some thoughts with you uh, concerning smart maintenance from a management perspective of you. And then in the second part, uh, I've prepared a video uh, where I could, like, I could show you a concrete use case. But uh, let's uh, start uh, with some, uh, some uh, thoughts. I, I believe that uh, we can't uh, continue to do our job uh, within SPB concerning the asset management as we did it in the last 10, 15 years. We really have to change. Uh, and I would like uh, to, to show you why we have to increase, increase our effectiveness uh, concerning uh, our renewal and our maintenance uh, services we are doing every day. You can see on this slide the development of our infrastructure. Uh, perhaps you know that last year the Swiss Parliament decided to, to invest more than 12 billion Swiss francs in the next 15 years in the network uh, of uh, our trains, more than 12 billion. And it is foreseen that uh, in 2035, every 30 minute in each direction, there is a train for our customer. And on the heavy, on the main lines, every 15 minutes. And uh, therefore the number of uh, passengers uh, transported will uh, increase really heavily. We calculate in the next 20 years to have more than 50% more passengers uh, on our trains uh, if we compare with what we have today. Uh -huh. And the question now is how uh, the development will be uh, concerning uh, the costs and, and certainly the costs that we have uh, for the maintenance and the renewable. I would like uh, to share you uh, some, uh, I would like to, to share you uh, some uh, figures. Uh, overall, the, the value of uh, the infrastructure uh, of uh, SBB is about 105 billion Swiss francs for the moment, 105 billion. And as you can see on this slide, about 40% uh, of uh, this 105 billion uh, is uh, is the value of the bridges and the tunnels we have uh, within uh, Switzerland. If you take now, uh, for example, the tunnels, the life cycle of a tunnel is more than 100 years. And uh, our uh, network statement concerning these tunnels is, is good. It's really good. And the question is now how much uh, we should invest to maintain with the value of uh, this infrastructure. And uh, it's a short calculation. Uh, if you calculate with 100 uh, years and uh, 42 billion, it's about 400 million Swiss francs a year. What we do really today is uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit more than uh, 200 billion uh, we invest per year. We can live with that for the moment because uh, a big party of uh, this uh, big part of this uh, objects are rather new. Uh, for example, the Gotthard base tunnel or the Chenery base tunnel, uh, as examples. But if we go now in the next 20, 30 years, we have to increase the investments in the re renewal, certainly uh, from our uh, bridges. Uh, there, we have a lot to, to do. Hmm. Therefore, the costs will, will increase if we continue to do our job uh, as we did it today. And the question is now, how do, do our customer react if we then due to this cost uh, increase, we uh, would uh, increase also the prices. And here we can show you an example in between the year 2010 and 2014, uh, the 
uh, the prices for the tickets uh, increased by 50 percent and on the in the same time the, the cost of individual individual transport uh, went a little bit down and on the right side uh, you can see the, how the model split changed uh, you see that uh, our customers uh, if uh, the gap is uh, too high between uh, the public transport and the individual transport, then they don't use uh, the public transport anymore. Therefore, uh, we can't uh, increase uh, the, the prices of the tickets anymore. Uh, it's foreseen to at least to have them uh, stable for the next uh, 10 years. And if we now look a little, little bit longer, then the question is, uh, is that enough or what do we think uh, what is coming uh, in, in the next 20 years? And uh, on this chart, you, you can see that today the overall costs of, of a kilometer uh, on the railways is about 44 cents. If you compare that with the road, uh, the road on the road side, we calculate between uh, 50 and 60 cents. Uh, here it's mentioned 40, 55 cents. Huh? There is an important difference concerning the question uh, who is paying uh, these uh, costs uh, uh, that can you see on the, uh, below at the chart. Uh, the user finance part on the railway side is only between 37 and 50 percent and uh, overall cost uh, calculated on the road side it's uh, in the direction of 80 percent. If we go now in in direction of 2040, we believe that the costs on the roadside will go down uh, due to the technological developments we already know today as autonomous cars and also new models uh, we, which will come with them, with share, shared car models and so on. And the question now is what what we face on the railway side. If we do nothing, our costs will increase and then the competitiveness of the railway system will not be enough anymore. And now that's the answer of the first question I raised up. Is there any need to change the way we do our work concerning maintenance? And the answer is yes, we, we have to do it. We have overall to reduce the cost of the railway system and uh, the maintenance is an important part of uh, these uh, costs. Concretely then, therefore, we have uh, goals uh, to uh, reach in the next uh, years. It's one example concerning our track maintenance. We want to find ways to reduce the average costs uh, of the maintenance of our tracks uh, by 12% in the next five years. It's an example. We have also goal uh, for other assets and we have behind the goals, we have uh, concrete plans uh, to, to do it. But in a general view, uh, I, I think the path we would like to, to go is uh, presented on this uh, chart, uh, I think, which is very well known. We really want to go up step by step in the direction of, the, of prescriptive uh, maintenance. Uh, if I go back 10 years ago, I think we have been mainly on level one, a little bit on level two. Uh, today, uh, we are between level two and level three. And the goal we want to go uh, in the next uh, 15, 20 years is uh, to be uh, then between level three uh, and level four. We have certainly some differences uh, between the, the assets concerning uh, the uh, the level we are uh, in. How uh, would we uh, like to reach uh, this uh, development? We, in the last uh, some years, we have uh, had a lot of concrete uh, projects uh, to uh, go this evolution path. And uh, I mentioned here on this slide some of uh, those uh, projects. Uh, what we are generating with that is uh, we get more data uh, to take the, the right de decisions. And there behind is also a question uh, at the end, with the, the whole data we generate with the sensors with, with all we have, 
we also increase uh, the complexity. We have to then um, big data uh, analysis we, we have to do, and we have experts for, for them which help uh, to uh, make this analysis. But uh, behind this also some risk that at the end, uh, the, the decisions which are taken are, are not the, the, the decisions, uh, the right decisions. Uh, and, be, and there we are in, it, it's a little bit a trap uh, to do more concerning sensors, but to also be sure at the end that uh, really the uh, right uh, decisions are taken. Huh? Uh, I continue uh, as a member of the management board and responsible for asset management and technology. I, I have about 500 uh, experts uh, within my teams and uh, these experts try to, to find uh, the, the best solution, but they are in a part, they do it with a very particular view uh, that's normal. And, and as a, man, a, a manager, I think my, my role is to, to at the end, uh, look at the decisions which are taken on, on these levels. Uh, gives us the best re result on a holistic view. And the question is now, how could, can I do this? And I think that's the difference between clever and, and, and smart concerning the, the maintenance. If we, ha we have a system which is very, very smart, then mainly we base on data and we use analytics uh, to come uh, to the right decisions. But we a uh, little bit then forget the, the human being and the, the process the human being has to go through to learn how to, to act with uh, these uh, data and to take the, the right decision. I would like to show you uh, this on, on, on this slide. Uh, if really I would be uh, more an engineer than a manager, then I'm of the left side. I fully concentrate on my experts and look that uh, we have the, the decision, we, uh, the, the data we need to take uh, the right decision. But uh, I think it's not enough. And what I'm doing, I'm 100% on the right side. I, I have to look that those who take the decision that those teams really are interdisciplinary. Uh, and and I, it's not important if personally I'm part of the team, but I have to look, uh, as I said, that, uh, that this team is able to take the, the right decisions. And uh, the question of being able, yes or not, is, is the question of also having a, a holistic view about the, the whole uh, system uh, we have as SBB, which is not only uh, a system with assets, but we have trains, we have operation, uh, and we have also our customers. And at the end, it's a trade-off uh, to, to find a solution to do our job so that our customer can use uh, the trains as uh, we promise uh, them through our timetable. As a conclusion for me, the basis is really to get enough information and data to have experts uh, to do their analytic job, but then uh, to have managers uh, who really look at the decisions which are taken are taken uh, on a level with a holistic aspect. Hmm. Voila. And I would like now to show you uh, one small example how it was done. Uh, it's an example concerning uh, our maintenance in, in green areas. And I think you, you can uh, see a little bit of what uh, is behind my uh, thoughts. Okay, I don't know if uh, you hear me, but I have finished my session. Okay, yes, uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we do have time for one question. Um, there is one question here in the panel uh, for you. It says, uh, what are the biggest challenges for SBB in terms of maintenance in the current current times? Yeah. One of the problems we, we have is uh, that we have uh, to do our maintenance uh, under, uh, during the time the, there is an operation on the track. Uh, 
we have uh, to do our work mainly in the night and we have a, a short uh, shifts to to do this work and this uh, makes it very uh, complicated uh, if you take now for example the track maintenance if uh, you only have uh, slots between four and five uh, hours and then in this time you have to do heavy work with machines uh, then you have to do a lot of organization to to be at the right time with the people with the machine uh, on the site and to do this work uh, really efficient and if we continue now i, I have uh, told you that uh, we will have more trends in the future and uh, i think uh, uh, the, the slots we have uh, to do our work will not increase, uh, not the number and also the time of the slot. And that uh, is a, a circumstance we have to deal with. Huh? Yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Michel. Sorry, I got your name wrong the first time. Uh, there is another quick question, right? There is, it says here, uh, what did E2E stand for in the SBB slide? E2E. Huh. I can't answer uh, this question, sorry. <laughs> uh, on, on which uh, slide was it? It says uh, the SBB slide. Mm -hmm. It is an acronym. It says E two E. What E two E stand for? Mm -hmm. uh, is what's that on my slides? I'm looking to find it. Uh, sorry. Could you tell me on which slide it was? It says uh, SBB slide. Uh, yeah, here, here, here. Uh, the, the previous one, the previous one, the slide 14. Yeah. Uh, 14. Four, yes, 14. Yes. This is scope uh, of uh, second, third column. It says E to E process. Uh, end, end to end. Sorry. End to end. <laughs> Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and when. All right. Uh, okay. So we have some more questions. Uh, yes, Antoine. So we have some uh, more questions. We are gonna leave it to the to the end of the session for our discussion. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, Michelle, thank you very much for your presentation. Mm -hmm. You're welcome.